Okay, guys, we're here today for Andrew Witsi. Guys, one of the newest like Americans coming up in Jiu Jitsu nowadays. And he's a Pan American middleweight and no gi champion. And also like world champion pretty much on every belt in Jiu Jitsu. And uh, he's from the Daisy Fresh Hip Pedigo Jiu Jitsu School, which is like coming out with a bunch of like great athletes. And I'm super excited to be here for him. Huge honor for me. And today he's gonna show us here all the concepts about his bus on passing. Yeah. And uh, can't wait to learn. Uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm, Andrew. I'm a big fan of yours, man. Okay, so so bus on passing is kind of like a concept. Okay. If you imagine we both start the match. Okay. So he, he pulled guard. Maybe he's sitting up. Maybe he's on his back. And I get the first point of contact on his legs. Okay. Now, from this point forward, if neither of us makes a mistake, I should win the match, okay? And it's kind of capitalizing on each little mistake that he gives me. So the very first time I touch his pants, he goes to grab my sleeves back. Instead of just letting him grab me back, while he's reaching, I start to move him out of the way. I got the first attack, okay? Now he either has to break my grips or he has to try to reposition and defend the pass. Most of people will reposition. As soon as he repositions his hips to turn back into me, we're using his repositions to chain into our second pass. Now, every pass along the chain should be a little closer to your finish. I could finish my first pass in the chain. It could be perfect. I could land a perfect Toriano on Bernardo Faria. <laughs> okay? Uh, most likely not. But the second pass, I'm a little bit deeper. Now it's going to be harder for him to just reposition his hips. Most people end up kicking up and over. Okay? And the more pressure I put down, the bigger the overcorrections that he has to do. So if he ends up circling his leg up and over, okay? If he does a shallow one, I have enough pressure to just go through. If he does a big overcorrection, big circle type motion, which one? Now I can start to go through on leg drags, okay? If he kicks way up and over this time and I'm way on the outside, I can do power leg drags, okay? And there should be no point in the chain where I have to do a full reset and let him get his bearings. So from the moment I start passing, okay, now I'm staying all over him to the moment I get side control or I make a mistake big enough, he locks me down into position, okay? I should be buzzsawing through the gut. Now, you have to have a gas tank, okay? Uh, normally, if you're buzzsawing through someone successfully, you're kind of kicking their ass and no one gets tired when they're beating the other guy up. Uh, if we both have an energy meter and it's draining, every time I almost get a pass and he really has to re-guard, really just get away, you know what I mean? And now when he finally gets his guard passed or gets it back, I already shift to the other side. Most good guard players don't get passed very often. So every time I almost pass him, he's out of his comfort zone, okay? That makes him tired faster than I get tired. Now, you can also get sloppy with your movements, okay? My Toriano pass is not good, I'm getting caught on the legs, I'm not getting enough rotation, I'm not giving him any real pressure, he doesn't have to react. That's because I don't drill enough, all right? You should drill your movements until you can go at a thousand miles an hour without making mechanical mistakes, okay? So that's how you buzz saw through someone. I don't try to ever let someone get me in spider guard, De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva. It's not that you can't break out and pass him, but everything he gets on me, I have to put in extra effort to pass, okay? It's all gonna take more effort, more risk. If I, right from the start, give it everything I have, instead of half-ass it, get put in De La Hiva, and try to pass his De La Hiva, I have a better chance of beating him. So, you, you just run through the guy. They never get a chance to ever slow you down. Occasionally, they'll put in hooks, like a, like a daily heave hook, that you can clear the moment he touches you. Okay, so a big concept is not accepting bullshit, you know? I don't have to stay in daily heave until the hook is tight enough I can't clear it anymore. So the moment he attaches, boom, boom, and we're going out, we're continuing the chain, okay? So this is a mental mistake people make where they accept things the they shouldn't position. accept, the full position. They go into the closed guard instead of bringing their knee up and getting up before it closes mm -hmm. and, and it happens all over the place. Spider guard, sleeve grips. Until he turns his finger over, I can usually get out of that. So the second he's touching my sleeve, you can clear this, mm -hmm. okay? But if I wait and then he turns his fingers, now I have to play his game. 
So I got it. the same thing with collar grips. When he reaches up and grabs me, if I let him turn his hand over, if you're not you breaking break it. it, maybe you break it. Most likely, I have to neutralize the grip advantage. Okay, but it. if I react to the second he touches me or he's reaching out, here you go. Just grab my grip. Man, it's so easy. You know yeah. what I mean? So you have to drill your your grip fighting until it's not a foreground process; it's a background process. So I'm never thinking about grip fighting. I'm thinking about passing, and every time he reaches up for me, it's just automatic, and my brain is thinking, pass, pass, pass. So you take those little things, you make them background process, so I can free up my brain to think about passing. So that, that's kind of buzzsaw passing, the concept to me in a nutshell. I got it. So, so Andrew, so fix me if I'm wrong. So the buzzsaw passing concept is like, every time I try to do something, you are already waiting for that, and you react, getting a little closer to pass than yes. you were before. By, by really pressuring you, if I get like, if I get the first advantage in the movement and you have to react to it, oh, yeah. I should be able to, whatever the next perfect step would be from that reaction. Oh, yeah. okay? So one thing too, like a really good reaction you can get on people, okay, is if you're close enough to their legs that they feel like they can grab you, okay, he's gonna try to sit up and grab my leg or grab my collar, but in the middle of him sitting up, that's when he has the least contact to the mat. So when he goes to sit up and grab me, that's the best time to really go after him. You know what I mean? Like, like especially if he got me locked down for a second, but he didn't really have a, a leg clamp, but he's like, just close enough. He's trying to sit up and grab me. Like we're just about yeah, waiting okay. for him to play his game. So timing might be one of the most important things in the season, right? It's, it's timing, but, but everything done without pressure doesn't work I on it. a good guy. And I look at it like this is like the first, Pass never works on a good guard player. And now the other way to look so at this. So you need the system to have the combination. You, you gotta you gotta know ahead of time what your combination is gonna be from almost every reaction you can think about. I got it. And now here's the thing: guard passers have it harder than guard players. Guard players play their favorite guard every day. Yep. Guard passers have to pass everyone's favorite guard. guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you, what, what's what's your favorite guard? Half guard. Yeah, I'm. If I go to half guard, I'm fucked. Okay. So I need to never get there. Okay. So it's like. You, you, you can maybe still pass his half guard if the stars align, but it's gonna be the same. The best spider guard player in the world tries to get you in spider guard. If I let him, I'm probably okay. in trouble. So like you, you kind of push the onus back on when you have to put the most effort in, and it's not gonna be getting out of their best guard. It's gonna be not letting them get their best guard, which again ties back to the start. I don't let you grab me first, or if I do, I clear the grip, and I immediately, if I clear a grip, I either grab you back and go, or I, keep whatever grip I get and use it, you know what I mean? And then the other thing too is I, I do a lot of touch go, where like the second I'm touching, I'm moving. Okay. Because everyone makes a mistake, even guys, good guys get lazy, they come in and they grab, and I just wait a second, yeah. and that's so all it takes for him to grab me back. Oh, and if he strips my grip, I'm dead. If he positions his hips so I can't move him now, I'm dead. I'm not dead now, I'm dead seven steps down the line, he gets me in his favorite guard. No, I agree. Yeah, Andrew, I love it. Like how everything you're explaining has a system to it. Because many people, they're great guard passers, but they actually don't know what they're doing. It's just like they just <laughs> did. But it sounds like you really have like everything systemized, systematized. And then every reaction that I give you, you have the right technique to counter my reaction like right away. That's kind of the feeling that I'm getting here. Like just a saying that we have where it's like, Rolling with a white belt, you never know what's gonna happen. But blue belts are just good enough to really get their ass kicked yep. because they'll give you reactions you can predict. It's in the same thing. Sometimes purple and brown belts are easier to beat up than blue belts because they're gonna play the game that you should have drilled enough to be, if not mentally, two steps ahead of them, but reaction time two steps ahead of oh, them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I like to drill so much that if I woke up, I had one hour of sleep over three days, and I can't even I can't even focus. My body's still gonna do what I drill oh, yeah. it to do oh, yeah. so, without timing when no, yeah. you know, no that's amazing no and then we I think everybody at this point everybody's following like how much and how hard you guys train so drilling is a huge part of what you do a big part uh, okay. I don't think I'm naturally gifted at all I just uh okay. we just train you can only suck for so long if you're doing as much right as you can so I got it and then uh what type of drilling you you normally do for this so for, for this kind of drilling, you have, to, you have to do a lot of reps. So like, I drill a lot of different ways. Sometimes I drill 
to where I'm trying, I have to learn how to do a move and I'm drilling the motions. So like, I, I like X-Pass as my favorite example because it's a kind of like a cornerstone of not letting yep. guys get that first hook that yep. locks you down or punishing them when they go to put that hook in yep. by catching them on the correction, yep. okay? And uh, I do X-Passes a lot of different ways. Some, some ways I do them, like if I just first started learning how to do an X-Pass, I would go slow and I would really focus on the mechanics that are going into it, okay? Yep. And I would still do 100, 200 reps in a day uh, I, I, I to do 300, but I don't think it's the number that's important. I think it's the mass repetition and focusing on it, okay? So any arbitrary big number is gonna be good. Now, when I get more comfortable with that, now I need to pick up the intensity. So after a week, I, okay, I, I, mechanics are good enough that I can pick the speed up without making mechanical mistakes myself. Good. So now I start to... Man, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I can feel the, pre the precision on it. And now, I need to practice to make sure I'm doing it right. So after two weeks of that, well, I need you to, look, I'm gonna try to come in and X pass you. Don't let me do it. Don't let me cross your frame. Okay. So now I start to feel where I'm making pressure mistakes. Good. Or because I was drilling without a lot of resistance, he was letting me get away without using proper mechanics maybe, or without realizing you actually really need some drive on this fist. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, just give me more tension. Here, I didn't clear his leg. So then I have to be, okay, I run into this reaction. Now I go back oh, yeah. to the drawing board. So if I don't clear the leg, what do I do? My follow-up is usually to come in and right. use a, a heavy pressure-based knee slice, okay? And if he starts pushing me off, you go back to the X-Pass. So then you start to see, where am I getting stuck? How can I follow up no, based yeah, on totally. what's happening? Oh. And then you start to build a system off of it. Okay. Yeah, but it's amazing to see like how you have a science behind it. Like you're just, you're not just like trying this stuff. So how did you develop this type of mindset? Was like, was just like trying in the training no. and figuring out or, or? Yeah, the honest answer is I played a lot of video games. Really? <laughs> like, like really competitive video yeah. games. I, I like the, the high level meta that goes into the strategies. I got it. And how they, the people break statistics down, what moves work more than others. And then what are they doing to counter this counter to this counter? Oh, and yeah. then it just goes, and that can be applied to any sport. Uh, I think sometimes jiu-jitsu gets a little behind on no one really cares about the meta, yeah. and they don't want to break it down. They, they kind of think jiu-jitsu is a unique sport, yeah. but it's, it's, it's not it's still a sport. So all oh, the yeah. concepts that apply to getting good at football, basketball, even tennis, you can bring that they are going to apply as a concept. Maybe not specifically, but as a concept you can apply to jiu-jitsu. No, man, really, really, really like big honor to be here with you. And to see like how much you know about teaching as well. Not only like, I can see that you're crazy tough, but the way you explain, it, I understand, you know, like it, it fits really well. I have a lot of free time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. But uh, guys, uh, Andrew just shot an entire structure all about his bus on passing. And it came out really, really good. It's over six hours of content, all about the, all his systems about passing. And it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com soon. We are super excited. We think it's going to be one of the best guard passing structures we ever made. So make sure to check that out. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. And thanks so much, Andrew. Yeah, appreciate it. Man. Thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.